Cubic zirconia is a man-made gem material which began to be produced commercially in 1976. CZ is produced because it has a very low production cost and, and the stone has a high refractive index. Basically, it's produced becomes it, because it comes closer to looking like a diamond than any other gem material that was available at the time. And today, CZ is produced in about every color of the rainbow. And it is a popular option for many gem cutters who want to cut stunningly brilliant gemstones from rough that doesn't break the bank. It's also a popular choice with those cutters who want to test their skills by cutting replicas of some of the most famous diamonds in history, like the Hope Diamond, the French Blue, or the legendary Great Mogul, among others. CZ provides a method to get the color and size of the stone that you want so that you can reproduce some of these legends of diamonds. But there are problems with CZ. It is sometimes a bit finicky and hard to polish. And in my history with CZ, it's been a very frustrating uh, stone to work with as I always seem to run into one facet or another that has polishing problems when it comes to CZ. So I avoid CZ when I can. As far as a design for CZ, well, a long time ago when I was looking around for cool designs uh, to cut someday, I think it was the facetdiagrams.org site that I came across a design called the Sydney Sparkler. And I thought it would make a great design to cut in a gemstone with a high refractive index like CZ. But on that site, uh, the cutting instructions are not included uh, with the gemstone. So I could see what the design looked like and I wanted to cut it. And I could see the basic information. It didn't seem like it was too many facets or too many tiers, but it didn't have the instructions. So I put that on my to cut list someday and, uh, and never went back to it. Then earlier this year, one of my fellow cutters sent me the design and it currently is listed on the Australian Fasteners Guild website. So now I have the design. Yes. The Sydney Sparkler design was created by Frank Dixon and he created it for CZ. As the design calls for a, a refractive index of 2.160 and CZ has a refractive index between 2.15 and 2.18. So it's almost a, a perfect match. Now here's the key information on the Sydney Sparkler. It's a round design, so the length to width ratio, the L to W is one. And you'll notice there's 113 facets in the design to cut the polish. And if I cut the design correctly, it should look like this from the top side and bottom. And you can see from these drawings that although there's a lot of facets, there's only four tiers or lines of instruction on the pavilion and only three on the crown, not counting the table and the girdle. And this means the design is pretty straightforward. And to me, it means that this uh, design is, is suitable for a beginning faster. And if it does produce sparklers as advertised, then it's suitable for any level of fastener. Now that I have the design, I need some CZ. Now, since I am not a big fan of CZ and I don't cut it often, I'm definitely not interested in going out and stocking up on a lot of CZ rough, even though it's low priced. So since I don't want to purchase a big piece, big chunk of CZ rough, what are the options? Well, for CZ, you have a great option. Commercially cut CZ is readily available on the market, cut overseas, very low price. So what I did is I just went online. In this case, I went to Etsy. I found a piece of already cut round CZ that was flawless and in a color that I like, in this case, canary yellow. And I bought that. That piece of commercially cut CZ will be my rough. I'll consider it a preformed piece of rough. So if you don't really want to grow an inventory of CZ rough, you may also want to just recut already cut CZ. You already know the exact color the finished stone will be. You already know that it's internally flawless or, or if it's not, you'll know that too. And since it's already cut or basically a preform, you don't have to spend the extra time getting a block of rough into the round shape. So to me, it's the perfect choice for when I have to cut CZ. So what I bought was an 11 millimeter round 
commercially cut CZ, and I'll use that as my preformed piece of CZ. I bought it on Etsy, but there's just as many options to buy CZ on eBay. Okay, I don't want to hold and uh, buy and hold a lot of uh, cubic zirconium rough and have to trim it and then cut it. So for me, I just buy a bigger piece of cubic zirconium already cut. Again, it's uh, just commercially cut. You can see they didn't uh, even facet, bother to facet the girdle. So it's sitting there unfaceted. Looks, you can clearly see it's just not faceted. So I'll use this piece of uh, cubic zirconium as, as though it were a piece of rough. So I'm just gonna use my super glue, my Loctite. I use Loctite 404, and I'll use that to uh, glue the uh, stone to the dot, then turn it over and let some of that uh, super glue flow down onto the dot. And that should be enough to hold it for me to refacet it or to use this as a, uh, basically use it as a preform and facet my cubic zirconium with this stone, this commercially cut stone. Yeah, the more I look at that girdle, that's ugly. Uh, I don't know why they don't bother to facet it, but I guess if they're only knocking out hundreds of stones for very low price, they don't worry about it. So I'll let that super glue set up and we'll be ready to cut our canary yellow cubic zirconium. Okay, for our cubic zirconium and our Sydney sparkler, since this is really a, a preform and it's not cut all that well, I'm gonna start with the girdle. They didn't even, uh, they didn't even pre-finish, pre-polish the girdle. So I'm gonna start with the girdle and I'm gonna use my 12M, clean it up, level it up and uh, start working the pavilion with the 12M. That should save me a lot of time instead of having a piece of, uh, you know, square rough to work with. It's already a, uh, shape the way the stone should be so I think I can skip all the rougher laps and start with the 12 m Okay, since I started with a pretty good preform all I had to do was go over it with the uh, my 12 m which is about a 1500 grit lap and I went through all the instructions except the final instructions which are at the very end very tip and those cut very fast and I'll cut those with the uh, either the, the 3000 or a more finer uh, lap, which I'm gonna use next. Okay, I've just started pre-polishing our Sydney Sparkler uh, yellow cubic zirconium with uh, 14K diamond on a bat lap. Actually, it's 13K diamond on a bat lap. John over at Gearloose has two types of uh, his pandemonium and the finer one are the PCDs with polycrystalline diamond. So this is the 13K diamond PCD. Polycrystalline diamond, I guess, cuts a little bit finer. And he also has the 14K, which is a little bit cheaper, with regular diamond. So whenever I say I'm using 14K, I did, but when I replaced my, uh, my pandemonium stick, uh, I started getting the finer grade, which is the 13K. So if I say 14K, I mean 13K. So I'll continue cutting our cubic zirconia. Okay, I'm working on the final row, the final tier of our cubic zirconium. And if you can see the, uh, the top facet, I'd have to bring it down a little ways to meet this row right here. And uh, I'm using the 100 grit bat on a bat lap, 100 grit diamond on a bat lap. And you see, I've already, I've worked about half of it and it's moving that facet just right with just the uh, 100K bat lap. So it's moving them to, to touch just right. So the 100K is doing the job to move that facet a little ways. I finished uh, polishing the upper half or the, or the lower half, the pavilion of our Sydney Sparkler. Now I'll put it in the transfer fixture and uh, 
and I'll work on the upper half of the stone. I made a video on how to transfer stones using the transfer picture. And here is the link to the video if you want to see how to transfer a stone on the dop after cutting the pavilion. However, aligning the girdle after you transfer the dop is a little more challenging for this design than just a normal standard round brilliant design. Okay, for uh, transferring, uh, after you transfer dops, when you align the stone so you cut the upper half of the stone, uh, for this design, it's a little bit unique. It's not hard, but you can't just line it up and make sure the facets on the girdle are flat and just pick any flat facets. You've got to have the facets where the one and the two and the three meet the, the between girdle facets. So it's kind of every other, every couple of facets. So I marked with the Sharpie this facet right here. These are the two facets I want to use, and I'll call them the uh, the 94 and the 2. So they've got it's got to be a facet where the little V underneath, right there and there, come together. And that was our number one uh, tier of instructions. And then the number two tier comes in, and then the, if it was under this glue, the number three tier all meet right there at that break or that line between the two facets. So these are the two facets I want to line up and at the at the two teeth and the uh, 94 teeth tooth of the index. So the rest of it's the same way um, that I showed you in the video on how to transfer. You just make set your angle at 90 degrees and line it up so that it is on your uh, piece of metal, flat piece of metal that's on our flattest disc, our ceramic disc. Okay, with your angle of your index set to 90 degrees and your stone on the uh, calibrated block there, what you do is make sure that, in this case, it's the number two tooth, that facet right there. You want to make sure it's perfectly level and that when you raise your armature, that it just breaks the surface. You can just see light between the stone and the, uh, and the block. Um, all along there at the same time. It's not uh, one piece is up or one, one side is not flat and the other side's down. That, that's out of alignment. And then, so that's the number two, or the number two facet, number two index. And then the other one is the 94. And it's that one. They're both level. And you make sure that's, that's the one that I marked right there. So there's the mark, the Sharpie mark right there. So our stone is now uh, in alignment and we're ready to cut the upper half of our cubic zirconium. Okay, I've just gone over the, uh, the crown with the, uh, my 320 grit topper, just to kind of grind off some of that rough. And you can see that I've aligned the uh, girdle correctly, uh, the crown, because the girdle line is nice and even, even with the 320 grit. So that's right where we want it. So now I'll go over it again with the 600 grit uh, diamond on another topper that I have. And then, uh, then I'll use the 12M, which is about a 1500 grit diamond. Okay, I finished going around the first tier, first line of instructions on the crown of our cubic zirconia. And you can see the difference between a 3K, 3000 grit diamond on a bat lap and which is the uh, this first tier and the uh, 12M, which is a 1500 grit diamond on the other tiers. So it's coming along nicely. We'll just, uh, I'll just finish out the crown with our 3000 grit diamond on a bat lap and then move to the next step, probably polish. Okay, I finished pre-polishing the cubic zirconian. I used uh, 14,000 grit diamond on a bat lap and then polished it with 60K diamond on a bat lap. And whenever I'm working with cubic zirconium, I use very, very little diamond powder, diamond paste from the diamond stick and uh, just a drop of oil. And I run the lap uh, much slower than normal. So maybe for the Ultratech, the number three maybe the four, 300, 400 RPMs. 
slow and do a good pre-polish with the 1400 and then a good polish with the uh, 60K. So now I'll set it up and cut the table. Okay, I finished polishing the table of our cubic zirconium. So now I'll soak it in acetone and then I'll weigh it, measure it, and we'll be done with it. I cut the Sydney Sparkler design, a design I've wanted to cut for a very long time. And I cut it in cubic zirconia because that's what the design was um, originally made for. I'm not a fan of CZ and I don't cut it often. And since I didn't want to stock up on CZ rough, I purchased a larger piece of CZ commercially cut round, already cut gemstone, and I used that as my rough. Now, for new cutters just starting out, I would not recommend you buy a lot of CZ rough. As I demonstrated, there is no need. In a pinch, you can purchase an existing commercially cut CZ for a low price and use that as your piece of rough. Um, you'll already be assured it's internally flawless and you can be certain of the color of the finished gemstone. So why load up on CZ rough? Also for new cutters, I would not recommend you cut CZ as one of your first gemstones. CZ can be problematic to cut and especially polish. I do absolutely recommend you cut CZ because cutting a variety of gem material helps you gain experience because you'll run into many of the unique cutting and polishing challenges um, of different types of gem material and you'll overcome those challenges. So cut everything you can, it will help you gain experience, but I still don't like to cut CZ. As far as the design, Sydney Sparkler, wow. This design was created for gems with a high refractive index like CZ. So the design worked great. The resulting gemstone just looks beautiful and it definitely has a lot of sparkle. This design is not difficult and I would recommend it for cutters of any experience level. And if you do cut the uh, Sydney Sparkler, let me know how it turns out. I bet it will be a real sparkler. And always, happy fastening everyone.